Hello everyone, my name is Shonda and welcome to my channel Under the Needle. I was supposed to wait to make this video tomorrow, but I can't. I can't. I have to make it today. Um, I have to make it today. So the picture that you see there in the corner, that's the quilt that I just finished. It's called Sweet Treats. Okay. So I'm going to take the picture down for a while. Um, but, um, but that's the quilt that I just finished. This quilt is called, again, it's called Sweet Treats, and it was in Block Magazine. It was the cover quilt. I did not use the same fabric line, of course, um, but so it's called Sweet Treats, and that's the cover. And this is Block Volume 4, Issue 5. So I'm going to pull the quilt here. Where is it at? Just wanna so this is the quilt. So first and foremost, um so not only is it available in Block Magazine, but the pattern is also available individually on their website, either printed or PDF. So um, the particular fabric line that I used was one of my favorites. I love this fabric line. I've been wanting to do something with it for a long time. That being said, I chose the wrong project to use this layer cake. So this is the layer cake. It's called Provincial Cream by Michael Miller. And it was just gorgeous. Um, I love that it had the stripe in there and the flowers and all of that stuff. Um, and then I had a little bit of coordinating yardage from, you know, my favorite print from the line. Absolutely gorgeous. So the, the picture that I put up showing my finished quilt um, is very dark. And it's dark because I had to take it in the house instead of outside in natural light, which is why I was supposed to wait until tomorrow to make this video. But I need to get this quilt behind me. Okay, um, so I started with this lovely layer cake here, one of one of my favorites, and um, it's probably one of the few layer cakes that I actually like spent more money than normal to get. I think I might have spent like thirty five dollars instead of my normal twenty twenty five dollars um, just because I liked it so, so, so much. Now, the thing with this project, this particular pattern, it actually uses Moda Cake Mix Recipe. And this is one. So I think there are eight different ones. And I use this one. So I bought this layer cake. And I bought, I really need to get a light. Because every time I hold something up, it just gets so dark. I have to work on that. Um, so this is cake mix, cake mix recipe one. And um, I was like, yeah, I really wanted to try cake mix recipes. Basically what this does is that it makes perfect half square triangles out of two layer cake squares. So you layer two layer cake squares, a, a light and a dark or whatever you choose to layer. And then you sew on the predetermined lines that they give you. You sew on these, on these dotted lines. You sew on those. And then when you're done sewing on the dotted lines, you cut, you cut on the solid lines. So that's basically how this works. So I had two layer cakes. I had a white one and then I had my print one. I layered it together and then you got to take one of these papers and pin. So you pin to keep your stuff from shifting. You keep to keep your the blocks and the paper from shifting. You pin everything. You sew on the lines. You cut everything apart. Simple, right? Super, super simple. And it was simple, but it was a little too simple. I like big block quilts. I like mindless sewing. But sewing on these lines, I did not enjoy. And I used all 42 of my layer cake squares, right? Um, even though I only needed 40. So you only need 40, 40 print and 40 background. That's all you need. But... I did all 40, I did all 42 of them. 
and there were 44 sheets of paper in here so I have two sheets left but just 42 times it, the monotony right because it tells you start here so 42 times you literally so you know down here up here down here down here over and then back up this long di diagonal line 42 times 42 times and you don't even get you don't even get to see like the pretty fabric right because you've got a piece of paper covering all your fabric so you don't even have the the benefit of pretty fabric to look at then once you're done 42 times sewing on that dotted line then 42 times you have to cut the squares apart so 42 times you're going to cut on this long diagonal line first and then you're going to have two pieces and then on this section you're going to cut this piece off and then you're going to cut this square out and then you're going to cut this 42 times you still can't see your fabric 42 times and then when you're done when you're done then you have all of these half square triangles. Now, the good thing, right, theoretically, is that if you cut properly, right? So if you cut on these lines, exactly on these lines, then you will have perfect half square triangles that do not require any squaring up. And in this case, we end up with, um, what is it? How many squares do we have? <laughs> Hold on. It tells you, right? So we end up with um, 42. Um, I believe they are eight or eight and a half inch half square triangles. We end up with 42 of those. But then we end up with a hundred, like 168 of these, um, of, the, of the smaller four and a half inch half square triangles. So that's 168 of the small ones and then another 42 of the larger ones. And for each one, you've got to pull the paper off. So for 42 large squares and for 168 small squares, you've got to rip all the paper off. Now, the instructions say to press it first, right? It says to take this half square triangle with the paper still on because the paper will support the bias edge right and the paper will uh, stabilize that bias edge and allow you to have less um what's the word i'm looking for we all know the word i can't think of it right now distortion less distortion in your half square triangles right um and when you press them, because they tell you to layer the print square, I'm sorry, the background square on top of the print square, and then put your cake mix paper on top of that. So that when you press the, um, you'll press to the dark, you'll press to the print, and that paper will be on your background and then take your paper off. But I found it more complicated to do that. Um, I found that complicated and because not complicated it just was easier for me to take the paper off first I will say when taking the paper off um, it helps to pull from the middle um, let me demonstrate hold on sorry These are my uh, leftover unused half square triangles from the project. Um, so for me, um, it was easier to pull to pull from the middle. So this is my half square triangle. It was easier to grip the paper in the middle here and pull it. However, it doesn't come off in one piece. Like the whole thing doesn't come off in one piece. It just doesn't, right? So you're gonna have bits. So you're gonna you're gonna pull, and when you pull this is a white square when you pull the larger part um, will come off pretty quickly and then you got to pull again to get the, the little 
this is going to be a little piece here by the seam line and you're gonna to have to pull that off sometimes you might have a piece with it you know some like random bit of fabric might wants to stick sometimes and that did happen um i used a 1.8 inch stitch length um that's just what i chose to use i started to use a 1.5 because i believe that's what that's what was recommended i think i don't know i was going to use a 1.5 but 1.5 stitch length is super tiny and so because it's super tiny um it's slower so i did a test using a 1.5 and a test using 1.8 and to me there was no discernible difference in how that paper came off whatsoever um, but I did it that way for at first I took the paper off I did I mean I pressed it and then took the paper off but to me that was more cumbersome it was easier for me to, to remove all the paper and then press it um, and I did not have any distortion you just have to be careful when you press so when I pressed I just made sure that I folded it over and that I did not wiggle the iron while pressing and so everything was fine and I had no distortion in my half square triangles um then we get to the piecing well not piecing we're basically put it, we're putting the blocks together right so all of our half square triangles are made but to me all of that was so tedious matching up the blocks I mean matching up the background and the print squares with the paper pinning on four sides sewing those lines and then cutting and then having to take all the paper out i found that very very tedious and unenjoyable i did not enjoy that process at all and i know a lot of people like triangle paper um i i did not i didn't i would ra i think i would have rather squared up the square i think i just would have rather squared them up That's just me. I think I would have rather stood at my stood at my table and squared up 168 four and a half inch. Um, I have a four and a half four and a half four and a half inch unfinished um, um, half square triangles. I have a four and a half inch block lock that literally I can just stick it on there and cut all four edges. And I think I would have rather done that 168 times than to take that paper off 168 times so my that's just my opinion i don't think that i'm a fan of the cake mix paper i still have more of it so i might do something with it in the future i uh, there's a possibility that if you're traveling and you need something to do it's certainly something you can do you can layer your stuff layer your squares together with your paper and do your sewing by your home and then you can take it on the road and cut everything apart and rip all your paper off and that's something that you could do without needing a sewing machine so there's that um but i so did not enjoy it it took me i know i, I took a trip to virginia in october i think it was like october 8th and i think i started the quilt a week or so before that so about a month it took me about four normally if i get rolling on a quilt i'll have that puppy knocked out in a week two but i just was not motivated to to work on this it took me i think i spent two weeks just taking the paper off honestly and and pressing them it i spent two weeks doing that just because i didn't want to do it i didn't want to do it at least sewing you know i want to sew but ripping the paper off no ma'am no ma'am so cake mix they work okay the paper came off super easily um it says to use this 12 stitches to the inch so i don't know if that's what i it, i used a 1.5 on my machine so maybe you could use a smaller stitch length maybe the paper will come off a little bit easier but to me the paper came off relatively simple and i don't imagine i would want to slow the machine down even more to get everything sewn right so i i would stick with my 1.8 and uh and leave it at that um also pulling from the middle the main reason i did the pulling from the middle is because if you don't pull from the middle you can pop some of your stitches on the ends 
So maybe if you use an even smaller stitch length, you won't have to worry about that. Um, but to me, it was easier to use a 1.8 inch stitch length and pull from the middle. I had no stitch popping. Everything was great. Fantastic. Um, so cake mix recipe papers, they do work. Um, they're easy to use. They are self-explanatory. If you are a newbie, if you are a beginner, if you want some perfect half square triangles, this is certainly how you can get them. But for me, no. Um, no. No, ma'am. I, I did not enjoy. I did not like. I did, I did not. I did not. Now, onto the pattern itself. This quilt looks great. Okay, I, I know it's going to be dark, but I'll, I'll show you. I showed you the picture earlier, but I'll show you my actual, my actual quilt, or at least best I can show you my actual quilt. Um, this is the block. So this is one block. It's a 16 and a half inch um, unfinished block. Okay, now if you can see, there are eight different prints in this block. Eight different prints. My layer cake only has 12. So if you pick something that only has eight, I mean 12 prints, and sorry, not eight, there's 10. Sorry, 10 prints in each block. 10 prints in each block. So if you pick a layer cake that only has 12 prints total, you're going to have a lot of duplication. So for this pattern, should you want to do it, I would suggest going completely scrappy from your scrap bin so you don't have a lot of one thing or go with one of those um, lines that has 20 different prints or 21 different prints. So grab you one of those layer cakes where you only have two of each square. You're going to have much better bang for your buck or get you a fat quarter bundle and cut some tenant squares or use your, your stash scraps whatever and do it like that don't be like me because i have very little variety in my blocks because i only i didn't want to have two of the same print in each block but there are secondary patterns so when you make this block here that's the block um where this cream this background meets this background. It's like all the backgrounds are pointing toward the middle in the block. But it creates a secondary block that is the opposite. So here you have a secondary block. I'm trying to... I'm terrible with this um, knowing which way to do for the camera. But the secondary block that it creates is this, which is the opposite. So even though I don't have two like prints in my individual blocks that I made, I ended up with secondary blocks that had prints that this where the same print was touching each other, where either the same print showed up or they were touching each other because and there was really no conceivable way for me to avoid it because I did not have a, lo a lot of variety in the line. So if you are going to do this, then um, I would say to um, to choose something with a lot of variety or go completely scrappy from your stash. So um, there's that. Another thing, seams. Now, I've mentioned this before. Um, there are no pressing instructions and they would have been extremely useful in this in this pattern the seams are so bulky um, unless you know what you're doing and you're willing to just wrestle with your machine um, press them all open because I the, the seams are so bulky because you've got all of these half, half square triangles coming together and so here, all these seams are coming together. This is so bulky. And I pressed some of them open. Um, like this seam here I pressed open, but this one I did not. So um, I would just say, you know, if 
probably you could get away. I, I think you could get away with piecing, because this is how I put, put the block together. I pieced a four patch of the half square triangles, and then I attached them to a matching, I mean, you know, another half square triangle. And that made half my block. I cannot. Um, that made half my block. And then I made two of those and put them together. So, um, yeah, I um, I think you could get away with doing the four patch. I think you could... I don't know. I think, okay. Okay, I take it back. I think you could get away with leaving your half square triangles pressed to one side. But then once you construct the block, if you don't put if you don't press all seams open, just be prepared to deal with a lot of intersecting seams. And then when you put the blocks together into rows, there are more seams that intersect. And because there are no pressing instructions you don't know how those blocks are going to come together and then also depending on how you might want to rotate your block right because you might want to rotate it so that you have different colors touching and like on your design wall you might oh i don't like it that way but if i rotate it you know if i rotate it 180 degrees then that works better in my layout right so you might want to do that so then when you do that you don't know how those seams are going to when you when you sew the blocks together you don't know how those seams are going to come together so i had to deal with a lot of seams um i will say that when you the white ones don't matter so much so like here um because the seams were bulky and i i was tired of this quilt and i didn't feel like doing a lot of pinning you can see here where i put um where i constructed my block <laughs> here um, the seams did not come together very well because I did not pin, but um, I was fine with that because you can't really see that because it's white coming together with white. Um, but I did try to do a better job in some of my other areas, but um, there were some places where the seams were so bulky that I just, um, you know, trying to get them to be accurate was a challenge. So um, I did miss some points and joins. I normally don't care about stuff like that anyway. Um, yeah, I, just, I normally don't care about perfect points and perfect joins. I don't care if they're perfect. I just try to get them close enough. And usually I'll throw a pin in there to try to get it. But if I throw the pin in there and it still doesn't work, if it's close enough, I don't go back and re-sew it. That's just me. Um, but... Um, yeah, I I did not enjoy making this quilt. I like looking at it now that it's done, right? Um, I like looking at it because I, th I think the fabric is gorgeous, but I did not enjoy any part of its construction whatsoever, whatsoever. And I think, it, I think it's just because by the time I got to putting the blocks together, I just was annoyed at the whole process. So I think I'm going to avoid <laughs> cake mix papers. You might see them in a giveaway with a layer cake coming up very soon because I have a few more of them. <laughs> so it's a possibility. Christmas is coming, you know, holidays. I did want to do some kind of giveaway. So you might see cake mix papers <laughs> and a layer cake or something like that. All right. So, um, you know, I... I don't have anything bad to say about the cake mix recipe papers. They work. They work very well. And they're the only thing like that on the market where you can get, that I know of, that you can get multiple sizes. You know, you can get multiple sizes of squares. So um, uh, the other triangle paper I've seen, it's like, here's, you can make a bunch of triangles the same size, but this lets you make different ones and you can actually make a pretty interesting quilt block that looks great, but, um, they're just not for me. And as for this pattern, it's not for me either, right? Because, um, in order to make it, I would either have to convert it to figure out how to do it on my own, which is possible. If I have enough fabric, might not use the same amount of fabric, but I certainly could figure it out on my own, right? Because if you take uh, two 10 inch squares, and I believe if you do the 
eight at a time method of half square triangles, you will get um, eight, right? So that's, so if you have two print layer cakes that are the same and two background squares, you could get eight four and a half inch unfinished half square triangles and two um, eight and a half. I think that I think that would be a little bit bigger. There might be nine, nine and a half inch unfinished that you could trim down or something like that. It's possible. I'm just saying it's possible. But I don't see me making this again because even if I were to do it again, this is this would be one of those quilts that I would have to press the seams open. And I don't like doing that. And if I am going to press seams open, I just, um, I'd rather not make something that I've already made, if that makes sense. Don't normally want to make the same quilt twice. It's just me. I don't normally read the same book twice. I don't really rewatch re movies. Like, I'm kind of a one and done. There's a few movies, of course. Now I'm just rambling. But there's a few movies, of course, that, you know, that are favorites that you might see all the time or that it might just happen to come on TV and you watch it. But it's not often that I have a film that I deliberately watch a second time or a third time. There's very few of them. And, um... This this pattern is not something that I'll be remaking. It it is gorgeous. Um, it was supposed to have borders, right? Um, but I'm just so done with it. I'm done. I don't I don't want to I don't want to put borders on it. Maybe one day, because it's not even like it's just one border, right? Because you'll mess up the patterns. If I just slap a border on here, I'm going to lose some of the some of the patterns, some of the secondary patterns, some of the pat I'm going to lose some of that on the edges, and I don't know if I'm going to like that. So, um I would have to do a white narrow border first, which is what Jenny did um in her project. I would have to do a white narrow border and then I would have to do the larger border and just I got too much other stuff going on. I got the snow along, I have the deco quilt along. I've got Phoenix coming up in a week and a half and I got to make the Halloween tote bags from the open gate quilt um thing because I have to have that ready to take with me this weekend and um I got to start making bowl cozies for the holidays. So this is not in the plans right now. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this puppy up because I do love the fabric. So I don't want to like layer quilted and bind it. I don't want to be finished with it because I might decide to revisit this later because I, I I adore this fabric line. I adore it. I adore it. Um, So I don't want to be hasty with the quilt. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it away for a minute. Put it away till 2022. Might even going to try to touch it this year. And I'll pick it back up next year and I'll look at it. And maybe at that point, I'll be um, sufficiently de-traumatized from the paper peeling. And I'll be able to uh, put a narrow white border on there and then grab my my gorgeous coordinating. My gorgeous. This is, this is beautiful. How do I not put a border? How do I not? This fabric is gorgeous. So I think a border is in my future. It's just in my distant future. Um, and it's not enough for it to use a backing. If I had four yards, I'd be using this as a backing and this quilt would be done. But I don't. But I could see if I could find some, but I doubt it. I doubt it. This, this fabric line was out the door quick. But I will look to see if I can find some Micromilla Provincial Cream and if I can find this exact same. And if I can find this exact same, it's gorgeous enough to make a great backing. Um, it would be fantastic as a backing. I don't normally um, spend that kind of money for backing. I don't normally, I normally find backing fabric cheap or super cheap, something cheap. Still cold shop quality but cheap. I don't normally pay $12 a yard for backing. I'm not paying 60 bucks for a back of a quilt, period. Um, but if I can find some of this, I might make an exception, spend a few dollars and use it as a backing, but I doubt that's going to happen. So I think what I'll be doing is just what I said earlier, wrapping this puppy up, putting it on the shelf and calling it a day.
What about a binding? I'd still have to do a border. I'd still have to do... Eh, I don't know. Anyway, whatever I do, it's going to be in 2022. Okay, I'm done with this quilt. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it again. I'm gonna spread it out and I'm gonna look at it one more time because the fabric is gorgeous. And then I'm gonna fold it up and then I'm gonna put it away. And then I will deal with this next year sometime. Um, so those are my thoughts and opinions about the uh, sweet treats um, pattern, quilt pattern, and the uh, Moda cake mix recipe volume one uh like comment subscribe um i know this video turned out a little bit long as mine usually do but um, i hope you have a great evening and i will see you next video